Hey guys, it's Michelle. Welcome back to my channel. I hope each and every one of you are having a wonderful and fabulous year so far. What some of you may not know about me is I am a treasury manager and a certified treasury professional by trade. That's my nine to five. That's what pays the bills. So I manage finances and accounting all day and I've picked up some principles and best, best practices that I like to apply to managing my personal and household finances. So today I'm going to share my top five personal finance strategies in the words of the great Maya Angelou, when we learn, we teach. And that's what we're doing in 2023. We're elevating our game and it starts with finances. I'm also going to show you how I use my brand new planner to stay on task and manage my monthly bills. So if that's something that you're interested in, then definitely keep watching, hit that subscribe button and with no further ado, let's get started. The first thing I like to do is create some ambiance in my workspace. So I'll light one of my scented candles. This one is the scented soy candle and crystal flora that I got from Target. And I've really been enjoying iced coffee lately. So I'll make me a nice refreshing iced coffee and I'm ready to get to work. All right, guys, let's just get into it. Uh, so let me show you what I use to track my monthly expenses. I use a bill tracker that I keep at the end of the month. I have a divider tab at the top so I can get to the section quickly. And I got these bill tracking sheets from Peanut Planner Co. and I absolutely love them because they're simple and they have just the information that I need to track. So at the top is the place to write the month, the due date, details, the amount due, and then I check them off as I pay them. On the back is the exact same thing. So I normally put my business expenses on the back and my personal expenses on the front. They do come out of different accounts, so I like to keep those separate. And if I have any notes about any particular bill, I'll just write that on a post-it note and stick it on the divider tab. Now I also got these reoccurring task sheets from Peanut Planner Co. And I got the idea for these from Rana Plans. I get so much inspiration from her YouTube channel, guys. I'm gonna link her channel below so you guys can check out her channel. I'm sure you'll find a lot of inspiration over there. But what I use these uh, reoccurring task lists for is for all of those important tasks that happen throughout the year that maybe don't happen monthly, but are important enough to track. So for example, my car registration, my quarterly teeth cleanings at my dentist, my annual physical my HOA dues are due January and February and March so I included that so I can rem remember to start paying those uh, at the beginning of the year and then my LLC registration for my business is due in April each year so all of those things that are super important that I want to track and then when I am filling out my monthly bills list uh, each month I reference the reoccurring task list to make sure I include any bills um, that I need to pay that month and I put all of my pay dates on my monthly spread. So in February, I get paid on the 3rd and the 17th. And I use these little corner stickers to indicate my pay dates. So uh, the next day is when I schedule to pay my bills. So we got the 3rd and the 17th. So let me go to Saturday, the 4th. And I need to pay bills. And then the 17th on Saturday. There we go. Okay. And that way I have it on my calendar and on my task list to pay bills when I get paid every two weeks. So since I've already completed my bill tracker for January, I'm going to complete February so you guys can see exactly what my process is. The first thing I do is write out all of my bills for the month. Anything that's charged to my MX, I'll write that on the list as well so I can keep track of that. I leave the due date and the amount blank until I get my actual invoice because I wanna know the actual date that is due each month and for those variable expenses, the amount due, I fill that in once I get my invoice and then I just check them off as I pay them. And my business expenses, I track on the back of the sheet because those come out of a different account and I like to keep those separate. Then I go to my bank. I use the bill pay system to schedule all of my payments. So I pay my bills when I get paid. So if I get paid on the 1st, I pay all the bills that are due through the 14th. 
on the next check i'll pay all the bills due through the rest of the month i love using this bill pay system i've been using it for years and i love it because it gives me the control versus authorizing vendors to pull payments directly from my bank account I can get bills delivered directly into the bill pay system and set those to pay when they're due. What's nice is I can set payment limits to avoid paying bills that are unusually high. So I can research and dispute those payments as needed. And right here on the bill pay dashboard is a list of all of my scheduled payments and my payment history. And at the end of the month, I reconcile my bank statement. Make sure you're reconciling your statements monthly, guys, because contractually, you only get 30 days to report errors to the bank. So by reviewing your statements, as soon as they come out, you can identify any fraudulent activity and dispute those transactions. So each month, I download my bank statement. And what I'm doing here is I'm using Sidecar to use my iPad as a second screen. And so I have my bank statement on my iPad and I'm entering the transactions on my Mac. And I found this really nice uh, monthly bank reconciliation template in Microsoft Excel. And it's really nice because it has built-in formulas. So all you have to do is enter your previous balance, enter all of your deposits and withdrawals, and it'll automatically reconcile your bank statement for you. And what I also like is that you can categorize your expenses and it has a built-in filter so you can filter expenses by category to track your spending and make sure you're staying on budget. So I can click on any of these categories and see how much I've spent for the month. And uh, one thing I like to look at is my monthly utilities because with the COVID, those are going up. So I like to track those and just see how they're trending. So this is an easy way to reconcile your bank statement each month and it's a free tool. My fourth personal finance strategy is use credit cards sparingly and pay the full statement balance due each month to avoid paying interest. Instead of paying interest, you can apply that money towards your principal balance or somewhere else in your monthly budget. And let me give you a personal example. So I use my Macy's credit card regularly because they give some great discounts, they give star money. So I really can get some great deals by using my Macy's card. But if I'm paying interest on the back end, I have to net that against the discount that I received in the beginning. So essentially, I'm not getting as great of a deal as I initially thought. And the interest rate on store credit cards is exorbitantly high. All of them are. And so I avoid paying interest at all costs. I'd rather keep that money in hand and use it somewhere else. Same thing applies to late fees. Pay your bills on time. Those late fees you can put somewhere else in your budget. My fifth and final personal finance strategy is take advantage of interest-free finance deals. And that circles around the concept of the time value of money, which basically says a dollar is worth more today than it is in the future because of the earning potential. So to break that down, if you had $500 today and you invested it in a savings account or an investment opportunity, that money is going to earn you interest, say over the next five years opposed to if you receive $500 in five years, it's not going to be worth as much as it is today because you can invest it and earn money today. So that's why I love to take advantage of these interest-free financing deals. But that strategy only works if you are disciplined with credit and you pay your bills each month because it's not no interest, it's deferred interest if you pay the full principal amount at maturity. If you don't pay it off by the date that is due, all of that deferred interest from day one, all that five years worth of interest becomes due and payable. So it's super important to make sure you make those monthly payments and you pay the balance off at the time it is due. If you can do that, it's a great personal finance tool. If you're not good with credit, stay away from it and pay cash only. So guys, to summarize my five personal strategies, record all of your monthly bills, pay your bills on time to avoid late fees, reconcile your bank statement every single month, remember the time value of money concept, and pay your full statement balance each month. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you found it helpful, please subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment and also share this video with someone who can use it. In the words of Maya Angelou, when we learn, we teach.